guys welcome back to the channel we are situated at the great fastness city the walls have come under siege and the stormcast have rallied alongside the lizard men and sylvaneth have joined after zinches and corn's defeat at the hands of the stormcast and the lizard men nurgle and slanesh have lent their ranks to this assault on this towering keep as the city and villagers outside have run scared as demons pour in from all angles. The forces of order rally as one united army against all four gods of chaos as they hurtle forward to kill. So here we go, the nine foot by four foot table of the Grey Fastness as the forces of order have rallied along this edge as the forces of chaos maraud through the village and the keep hurtling forward. Today's game is going to be a mix of the scenarios. We've got the three objectives. One, two, and number three up here. From turn two, you score one point if you hold it for one turn, two points if you hold it for two turns, and so forth. And we're simply going off number of models within six inches of the objective. So here we go after deployment. Forces of Chaos have finished setting up first. You've probably seen pretty much where a lot of stuff is as the camera has panned round. However, I believe the Forces of Chaos are electing to go second. Mm, we I are. Think so. Weaver, the the will of <laughs> right, let's move on to order turn. Right, so with the forces of order going first, we are using a rule of four rather than the rule of one, so we are allowing four spells and summoning. Isn't unlimited, but we're saying that you can summon back anything that has been killed. So the Carnosaur got Mystic Shield on thanks to Alariel. These guys tried Mystic Shield, but unfortunately it was failed. These guys up here even have Mystic Shield as well. Command abilities, Liam tried to get his ability off with both of the Star Skinks, but unfortunately failed. So these Saurus Temple Guard aren't getting re-rollable saves just yet. Lucy of course used Lord of the Horse with this guy, and it means no battle shocks for the Stormcast, and almost everything didn't come on from reserve. The only thing that did was where the hiding. Lord Celestin on foot, Lord Castellan down there, and Azeroth who is up here. And as you can see, everything else is pretty much pushed forward just a little bit. I think they're being a little bit apprehensive. Let's move into the shooting phase. Right, so shooting phase. Scarbrand actually took a single wound from Star Drake's uh, Fallen Stars ability. He took fire from the Raptors up here, but thanks to Graham's debuff of minus one. Uh, luckily, he only took two wounds, but I managed to pass my talisman save. These guys and Liam's Bastilladon managed to kill five blood letters between them. And for Battleshock, I rolled a one and I got five back. So that was handy. I forgot to mention down here as well that uh, the Great Unclean One took fire from the Judicators and Venator. Up on the top with the Star Fated Arrow finally going off for once. And uh, Sharpie managed to save most of it. He only took two wounds altogether. Meanwhile down here, Lucy's Vanguard Hunters turned up and shot into these bloodletters and did nothing. And these guys turned up and shot down here and did nothing. Meanwhile, right at the other side of the battlefield, one, I want to say Hellstrider? Yes. Hellstrider went down thanks to Alariel. So yeah, not a great turn for the forces of order, but they have garrison forward and ready to meet the charge from the Chaos Demons. Right, so Chaos Turn 1. A very quick note as well, that these guys, when they did the battle shop, although I rolled a 1, Liam Slan rolled a 5 or 6 on his D3 chart, which means all the Chaos Demons have to roll 2 dice when taking battle shocks and pick the highest. So although I gained 5 back, I didn't because I rolled 6, which meant I actually lost another 1. So that unit unfortunately went down. We've done the rest of the hero phase. I lost a dog because of the Blight King's ability. Uh, the blood letters have got Mystic Shield on them. Graham used something on them to allow them to re roll saves. Like one of visions from the sorcerer. That. Begrudgingly. <laughs> uh, the Bloodthirster has Mystic Shield on thanks to the Keeper of Secrets. Uh, 
The <laughs> Lord of Change. Lord of Change. What did you just call my bird? <laughs> the Keeper of Secrets, <laughs> meanwhile. He's a monster, he's corn. <laughs> the Keeper of Secrets, meanwhile, is actually going down there. Phil's Destiny dice, he did some meddling with it. Uh, yeah, basically a lot of re-rolls and add and, and, and in the end, all the three twos turned into one and two sixes. So, so there we go. Uh, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, he gets D6 plus D3 wounds back. Uh, as a result, obviously, the two are healed. And Graham used a spire presence on the Chosen. Yep. And is that it? Uh, I think so. Oh, command ability, I used uh, the Bloodthirster's ability on the Blood Letters to allow them to run a charge, and the Bloodstalker whipped them to allow them to add three to their run and charge move as well. Let's move forward. Right, right so here we go in the movement phase, and everything is basically shambling forward on this side with Nurgle. The corn demons and the slash fiends, Graham, yeah. have pushed forward onto the objective to try and make it harder for the Stormcast to take it back. Meanwhile, the vanguard that have appeared on the outside, the Keeper of Secrets wants a piece of them and then potentially come back in later turns. Are they crispy? Are they, crispy? Are they juicy? <laughs> Tell me, precious. Meanwhile, down here, all of the forces of corn have pushed forward. Ushered on by the forces of Zinch buffing them. And of course, the only thing in range really for most of our stuff is the lizard men. So we're hoping to soften the lizard men up quite a bit. Down here, the warp lightning cannons have both pulled round, but unfortunately still out of range of Lucy's raptors. Apart from the Lord of Change. Apart from the Lord of Change, who's within 18 to do some damage with his shooting attacks. Lucy keeping them back just enough to be out of range of the most damaging shooting that we've got. Meanwhile, over this side, the Blight Kings are heading for the Realm Gate, potentially. We are playing the Realm Gate rules to pop up over this side of the battlefield. Yeah, so, Graham's still got a few more things to do, and a couple of more people to move forward. Phil's got some heralds at the back here as well. Oh yeah, I forgot about Birdie. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be moving into shooting. Hopefully, those should be a lot less lizards on the board right so here we are after the shooting phase and Liam's lost a fair amount of Saurus warriors thanks to Phil's wake of fire from all the chariots the warp lightning cannons doing eight wounds between them this one Sharpie rolled a two rolled six dice rolls four ones <laughs> yay so um, Phil managed to do two damage to the Bastilladon and then Wake of Fire did an additional three mortal wounds, so not too shabby. Over this side, this chariot, and Wake of Fire managed to kill uh, two, uh, two Vanguard and, and put one on one wound. And I think that was pretty much all of the shooting. Was it? We don't have much shooting. Um, Lord, Lord of the Change killed a raptor. Hmm? Lord of the Change killed a raptor. Yep, Lord of the Change killed one raptor, and that is pretty much it. So, it's on the combat if we dare. Do, do I dare? <laughs> you know what? I want some red dice. Where's my red dice? I'm just gonna leave you to it. <laughs> I don't even know where my red dice are. Let's roll some purple dice. Ooh. For Slanesh. My beautiful purple These are charging and they're adding four. <laughs> that's nine, so that's a 13 inch charge I've got. Right, so combat's using the rule of four. We're attacking with four units. So Graham's gone with these two. I managed to inflict a total of seven wounds on these Vanguard. And Phil, meanwhile, down here, has managed to drop these guys to only... I did nothing in the combat phase. Yeah, but still. You, you might kill some... So I didn't drop them. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so that was three combats, and then four. These guys charged in, and thanks to doing mortal wounds on fours, thanks to being more than a blob of 20, and being within range of the Bloodthirster, managed to do four mortal wounds on Durthu, with just four attacks, killed a number of the Temple Guard, and just three. Killed the Bastilladon and three Dryads? Yeah, four. Four, four Dryads, so that's uh, at least going to be a number of Battle Shocks <laughs> heading their way. Uh, but for now, they get to swing back with four units. This ain't going to be pretty. Right, so of course, Durthu killing 18 in wow. return. And then the Saurus Guard killing all but two, but obviously they would all go fail the battle shock, even if I got a full six blood letters back. No. However, the Dryads, two more fled to battle shock. Meanwhile, at the other side of the battlefield, right in the keep, Lucy didn't do any damage back. Oh, is that one wound on a flamer? Yeah. One wound on a flamer, and she didn't flee to battle shock either. 
So I lost the unit of blood letters, but I killed the Bastilladon, I thinned out the Dryads, I thinned out the, the Taurus Temple Guard. We haven't done too bad. So, who wants to roll for turn two? We're praying for the double turn here. So, come on, Slanesh. Graham and Callum. You're welcome to. Gr oh, oh what? Don't Boom! Yes! Get in, oh, son. this is going to hurt. Order, cool. turn two. <laughs> right, so hero phase for order. And this girl has healed Durth through three wounds, so he's only lost one. He's got Mystic Shield on himself. The Kernoth Hunters have got Mystic Shield on them. Lucy's used the Castellan's Warden Lantern to give these guys plus one. No, Castellan. Oh, you've used that on, on Celestin yeah. on foot. So he's now got a two up save. Uh, and then he's used his command ability thanks to Consumer Commander, which means anything within nine inches of him gets plus one to hit in combat. Just Stormcast. Oh. Just Stormcast. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, Callum. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking my balls, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Liam summoned a, um, a unit of 10 Saurus here. And you may have noticed that there's another Bastilladon. Curse yeah. it, Sky Lizards! Yes. Liam rolled a 12, so the Bastilladon is back. And the. Is that a Tree Lord? Yes. Tree Lord cast Mystic Shield on Celestine and Dracoth, so he's a plus one. Armor save, and Liam used the ability from the Carnosaur there to give these guys on the roll of a six in combat, they generate an extra attack. So that was an absolute massive mouthful. Now we've got movement, and Lucy's got some Stormcast to deploy as well. Right, so movement phase. The dragons are pushing forward along the castle wall. Stardrake is heading towards Papa Nurgle himself, whilst Liam drops skinks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Judicators have uh, getting a few lines of shots in, looking to hopefully start and damage a lot of the bloodletters. Lucy's Decimators and Lord Veritand have arrived, but not the Retributors or the Liberators for the moment. So Durthu is pushing forward, going for the Bloodthirster. Carnosaur, Saurus Warriors, everything's going for this objective on this side, and Callum's moving on Lariel. You can't squat, you can squash them if you want. Uh, don't want to squash them. No, no, okay. So, over this side, the skinks have set up ready to chuck some blowpipes into a lot of mm. demons know, over this side. Oh, this is this turn is, is going to be absolutely crucial. There's going to be a giant clash in the middle, and it's probably going to take a while to work out. So, mm -hmm. let's see what happens in the shooting phase and see how the forces of order retaliate. Right, so shooting Durthu and the Tree Lord have brought down. The Bloodthirster to only six wounds, and that was with the help of Alariel as well. The Lord of Change has taken a single wound, and the long strike crossbows from these guys failed to do anything to the Bloodthirster, passing those all important ward saves. Down here, you'll notice that the Blood Letter herd has thinned out thanks to Liam's flamethrower and Celestine on Dracoth's storm breath doing a number of damage. Judicators even poured it into the blood letters. As you can see, we've lost 12, 14 of them. Ouch. The Tempestos shot into the uh, Demonettes and killed four, which means they're at minus one to hit, and even did a couple of mortal wounds to the Plague Bearers. Star Drake, meanwhile, he dropped a load of star stuff. Five. Five, and various wounds went on Scarbrand, not Scarbrand, the Great Unclean One, the Lord of Change. And numerous other things. There's a lot to keep track of when you're doing this. The Judicators over this side managed to do some damage to the Blood Letters. I'm guessing Venet killed the Chariot? No. No, it was the... Uh, the it was the uh, Skinks. Ah. Venet went for the Lord, uh, the Slanesh God. Lord Fair enough. Keeper of Secrets. Lord, keep that keeper of secrets. Yeah. There's too many Lords and Keepers and... and keep the Secrets. Yes. <laughs> and I think that was pretty much all of the shooting. Yes. I think. However, it's now going to hurt because Durthu is only 8 inches away from the Bloodthirster. That's not good. So, let's see if the forces of order can hold back the tide of chaos moving into the combat phase. Right, so we're just in the middle of the combat phase, or closing stages of it. The Keeper of Secrets and the Seekers have managed to kill the Vanguard Hunters down there, but these guys took out Phil's Flamers. Down here, despite getting 10 wounds with the Flesh Hounds on Venator, his armour held strong and he lost one wound. The Judicators charged in and did one wound to the Slanesh... 
delicious. Wow. Beans. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Stardrick tore apart the unit of 10 plague bearers. Down here, the Stegadon done loads of damage to the blood letters, and there's only five of them left. But as you can see, I've lost 21, which means even if I roll the one, I'm still dead. Um, Liam, uh, Phil's chariot rather, managed to do quite a lot of damage to Phil there. Uh, there, too many names. To Liam's Stegadon. Uh, Celestor and Drakoth and the Decimators, though, all failed the charge. Durthu failed his charge, and Liam elected not to charge in with the Saurus as he didn't want to be out of range for that crucial armor save. So, the last thing we've got to do, Graham has piled in with the. It's the Mask of Slanesh, but I forgot the model. <laughs> So it's a hero of Slanesh yeah. that is actually disguised as the mask. Yeah. So hopefully it'll kill him and then we'll move on to battle shocks. But not too bad for us. We didn't take too much damage and hopefully we can counter punch in the subsequent turn. Okay, so at the end of turn two for order, they had the most models within six inches of this one, so they controlled it. We had more models within range of this one and we had more within range of this one by one. So, hero phase, there was a lot happening. The dogs piled in and attacked uh, Venetan, dropped into one wound. Uh, Graham cast Arcane Ball on these two. Sharpie tried to cast Plague some Plague Wind from the Great and Clean one, and he did roll a seven, but because Star Drake is there, <coughs> it's minus one to his roll, so he didn't get that off. Uh, moving across, what else has happened? Phil, tell us what your spells is um, that you've done. The guy in the chariot tried to do his personal one and uh, failed. Uh, this guy uh, did the Blue Fires of Zinch, which is the Disc's personal one, one of the Decimators, and killed the Decimator. Yep. Uh, this guy summoned a Chariot, which is that Chariot behind um, the Herald one. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy did Bolt of Zinch and Infernal Gateway and killed Durthu. Woohoo! Um, using Destiny Dice as well, was very helpful. Yep. This guy tried to use Zinch's Firestorm from the Signature onto these, and didn't do anything, and this guy summoned the uh, Three flamers there, and I believe that is everything. Okay, Sharpie summoned some uh, plague bearers around there, and meanwhile I used uh, the bloodthirsters ability on these to allow them to run in charge. Bloodstalker whipped them to give them plus uh, three to run in charge, and reroll ones to wound, and I opened the portal of skulls. And uh, Celeste used his command ability to allow the chosen to pile in and, in and attack twice. The sorcerer cast his uh, demonic power spell on them, so they get to reroll ones, and then used his oracular visions on the bloodthirster, so he gets to reroll ones to save. And the idea is the bloodthirster pulls back maybe a little bit this turn, get more models up there, and hopefully wreck face. Let's go into movement and see what we do. Right, so shooting phase. The Kernoth hunters took four wounds thanks to Sharpie's warp lightning cannon. Uh, Hellfire Breath from the Bloodthirster did one mortal wound to Lord Celestin down there. Phil did a single wound to Lord Veritant. Two wounds. Two wounds? Yeah. Cool. And one of the chariots did six wounds? Uh, well, two of them, one flew over and then another flew over. And they did the wounds, the D3. Mortal wounds were flying over. So doing six wounds to them. Yeah. The other Warp Lightning Cannon can see Star Drake through the gate and did six mortal wounds to him. And the Great and Clean one. Killed a single skink by puking on him. I think <laughs> that's almost everything. Not a lot of shooting. So, uh, as you can see in the movement phase, nearly everybody's pushed forward. We've swarmed around this objective, we've swarmed around this one, and we're hoping to try and control all of them this turn. Let's move on to charges. Right, so we've done the entire combat phase. It's taken us quite a while to do it. Basically, Scarbrand hurtled in. Did next to nothing, because even with minus two Ren Bleem still passed most of his saves. Uh, and of course, those guys hit back and killed the Bloodthirster. The Bloodthirster went first. The Bloodletters wiped out the Decimators. And then these guys, because I charged them, Leem's Battalion gives them D3 damage each. For not moving. For not moving. And he got, what, 10, 11 wounds through? 13 wounds. You saved three. And then seven out of them, ten did... Three damage, three damage each. each, so he killed 25 with the damage, and then obviously Battleshock automatically kills the other five. Um, so down here, not a lot happened again. The Blood Letters managed to kill Venator. A couple of bits and pieces backwards and forwards. Stardrate, of course, ate the spawn for breakfast, and a couple of Plague Bearers. Um, and that was pretty... Ah, down here. <laughs> Callum. Yes! This guy is getting named because Callum 
managed to keep him alive by rolling the two for his battle shock. The only good thing in his army. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that, uh, we technically control this one because we've got more models within six. We've definitely got, oh, we might have to measure this one. Uh, but down here, we've definitely got more than six within range of this one. So we control this for the first turn. It's going as one point there and one point down here. How many is that? Is that three? That's two or three. Two or three, let's have a look. Uh, two, and then... No, does it... We'll shout the title. Oh, ah, yeah. no. Nap, so that is a draw for that one. So we score two points, and Forces of Order are still on one point. But Lucy has some reserves coming on. So, turn three. <laughs> Phil and Calm are going to do the honours this time. Do you want to watch a six? Yeah. No, not that. I watch a six. Watch a six. Have one. Watch. Watch. Get oh it, son. my word! Boom. Have that. <laughs> well, look, it's a three. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is gonna hurt. Is he? I love how I actually called it as well. Oh my word! This is destiny does. Yes. Destiny does. All right. So hero phase for the forces of order. Liam Starskin finally got the four plus ability off to allow these guys to re-roll saves. Lucy's Castellan has used plus one armor save on Celestin, and Celestin has used his plus one to hit, obviously on himself. Uh, Ilariel used Mystic Shield on the Kurnoth Hunters and healed them for D3. Uh, the Slan at the back tried to uh, summon another Stegadon, but Liam unfortunately didn't get that off. Double one. Yeah, and the Branch Wraith cast Arcane Bolt on Scarbrand and killed him. Yay. Uh, you'll notice Lucy's Liberators have turned up, and of course this guy has used Lord of the Host, and the Retributors have turned up here to try and take back this objective between Stardrake and those guys, as well as the Judicates. And Azeroth, yes. Oh, he's got the Burning Lantern. Oh, crap. Yeah, this is, this is going to be massive game-changing in this round. The Great Fastness is going to stay in the hands of the Forces of Order, we think. Let's move into the shooting phase and let's see if the forces of chaos can weather the storm. Right, so last part of the hero phase, Azeroth let off his lantern, did two wounds to the Mask of Slanesh, killed a demonette, uh, killed an entire base of Nurglins, uh, a plague bearer here and a couple of plague bearers there, but the fiends were just out of range. So, probably worth doing to do a little bit of extra damage. Meanwhile, across here, the Judicators have moved up into cover. Celestin on Drakoff has moved forward to potentially try and deny the Demonettes from getting in, whilst Liam's Temple Guard, as well as Lucy's Liberators, try to score this objective. <coughs> and down here, everything is moving about. The forces of order are moving forward. Kurnoth Hunters with them swords, that's going to be horrible. But Sharpie and Phil might have accidentally denied Alariel being able to land in here because they would be within three inches of both of these models. So instead, she's going for the guy on the corrupted Drakoff. Callum? I need, a, I need one of these guys, but I only got a one, so... Wait, <laughs> <laughs> every little helps. It does, and so turn four, they might be up there to try and do some damage. Right, so shooting phase for order has been brutal. Absolutely brutal. So we had the hammers come in from Lord Celestin. We've had the skink priest. We've had both units of raptors pour into the Lord of Change, and he's left on five wounds. Five. Lord Celestin storm breath did damage to all of these guys down here. Uh, something else was shot. Uh, what killed these? It was the Bastilladon. Uh, doing six wounds, doing three damage a piece. Is it? against demons yes oh that was horrible so that killed them down here meanwhile uh all the fat shots from the judicators and the skinks hiding up in the battlements managed to do a lot of damage to these guys so there's only a couple of blood letters left there's two dogs and there is only one hell strider left so that was absolutely brutal and we're not looking forward to these charges this is going to hurt us a lot if the forces of order make these charges let's see what happens though right so after an absolute brutal turn of combat the kernoth hunters and the saurus smashed apart graham's chaos warriors that were down here the dogs nearly went 
Alarial and this guy exchanged blows but not much has been done. The Carnosaurs hurtled in against the Chosen. Down here the Liberators and so, um, the Drakhoff managed to take out the Herald and put a lot of damage in on these guys. Even the Judicators managed to kill a few of the Demonettes. But over this side the Retributors as expected smashed apart the uh, Bloodletters. There's one dog left hidden down there. And one fiend underneath as well as Papa Nurgle looks down at the Star Drake that has just eaten his entire squad of Plague Bearers. So that was pretty much it. It, it was horrible. It's brutal. There's monsters raging left, right and centre and chaos is literally rampaging through the village. But... <laughs> It's over to the turn of chaos. We are not, but humble pirates. <laughs> it's worth noting, obviously, these guys do control this objective. They obviously control this one. And they now control this one. So that gives them three points, putting them at a total of four to our two. We have to take at least two of these objectives now to even draw the game. That's going to be hard. We got it. <laughs> Lads. She's laughing, I don't know why. why you, <laughs> you don't think we can win? Let's see what we can do. Right, so hero phase. This dog has piled in and attacked and did nothing to the Judicators. Uh, Graham tried to use Arcane Bolt on the Retin Reviews but failed. Meanwhile, Mystic Shield. Mystic Shield. Ah, Mystic Shield on himself. Meanwhile, Sharpie's Great Unclean One did three mortal wounds to Star Trek thanks to Arcane Bolt getting that off. Phil, what did you do? Nothing. Um, I did four <laughs> mortal wounds on there from yep. him. Um, this. Uh, did six wounds using Destiny Dice on him, and then he finished off with Arcane Bolt. Then he used on the Carnosaur. On the Carnosaur. Yep. And then his Infernal Gateway killed the Skink. That did naff all, and that did naff all. But that went for her, and that went for them. Right, and her but we did try to. There was a ability that he, he tried to put on them, but failed. But basically, any mortal wounds that went on a on a two or more would have been D three, and it would have been loads from Psychic, and it would have been right. one of our best chances of taking her out. Meanwhile, all I've done is this guy's whipped himself, if that's possible. Hell's the next. Right, so let's uh, might as well do the movement and shooting in one because there's so little of it to do, but let's see what we can do. Right, so down here, shooting phase hasn't been too bad. We've managed to take a lot of damage out here thanks to Phil's Lamprey Bites. A lot of change and all of the heralds shooting in hasn't done too bad. These guys here have managed to take out four liberators, mm -hmm. and actually we thought we'd maybe try and oh, battle shot them, but we can't. Because no, they can't. because they took damage from our shooting attacks from both of them, four up they take D3 wounds, mortal wounds, three. So three more mortal wounds. So one guy, and damage on one of them. But, Star Drake is down to five wounds. Thanks to Arcane Ball on that guy. And Shabby even managed to get three wounds through. Yep. Uh, but Lucy passed all of her saves, rolling three five ups. The Warp Lightning Cannon, Shabby rolled six on both of them. So only one, two more wounds done here, and a couple over there. So it's all to play for. We're probably going to control this one, which will get us one point. But we have to take one of these two in the combat phase to force a draw. Let's see what we can do. Right, so combat's down here. The Keeper of Secrets didn't do anything to the Red Reputers and the Red they Reputers. Killed three of them. They killed three? Yeah. Oh, right. And then absolutely got tore apart with Star Soul Maces. The Great Unclean One got really lucky, wounded Star Drake, but unfortunately Lucy passed her saves. Uh, the Beast of Nurgles took some damage as well. Across here, the Chariots and the Heroes of Khorne tried desperately to take back this objective. But the Liberators and the Temple Guard were just too much and they beat them back. Meanwhile, at this side, the Warriors of Chaos have marched forward and been able to take control and hold up the Kernoff Hunters to control this one. But, moral victory of the game, these guys managed to finally kill Ilarial. <laughs> but, yes. We did it in one turn. She, she wasn't in combat. <laughs> no, most of the game. Yeah, we did no damage in us. She hit in the background of the game. So, it means that we score one point for this objective, which means that the forces of order have held up the forces of chaos as they have advanced on the Great Fastness. The Lord of Change retreats, as does 
So I went to Lord Celestant on Star Drake. The scattered remains of the Chaos Forces retreat to rally and fight again. Oh, pardon my pardon. Another day.